Okay, um, we're now going to try to reason out how to do that part of the problem um, where we're going to charge for the uh, multiple oil changes uh, at a reduced rate uh, past one oil change uh, if the customer selects that. And so the charges that for up to five oil changes will be what you see on the screen, 80, 75, 70, 65, and 60. Um, Say we want to do four oil changes so that we just pick a number sort of at random. In that case, uh, we would have, as it says here, um, the first oil change would be zero minus zero deduction would be $80. Uh, the second one, we would want to subtract $5 and get 75 and then 10 get 70 for the third one and the last one they would only have to pay 65 for so the reason I've written it out this way is that we can start to see uh, the equation that we're going to want to use eventually in our program this is a total charge of $290 and a uh, savings of $30 since they want us to output both the total charge uh, in combination with the car uh, price it's going to be included in there uh, we also want to output the if you remember the total savings for the oil changes the first thing to recognize is that we can use a loop to solve this you, know, you might think using a case structure alternation to solve this but what if the company decided to expand the number of oil changes to 10 you would have to amend the code in the case structure and add more options you may not have to amend the iteration code at all depending on how you solved it Okay, so since the number of oil changes is 4, we could use the number to calculate the deduction. So that would look something like this, where the count of the oil change uh, is 4, the deduction would be 15, the possible algorithm therefore would be 80 minus the quantity, $5 for um, each deduction, if you recall, times 4, the count of the oil change, minus 1. So this right here would be 3 times 5 would give us the deduction of $15 and um, that would be subtracted from 80 to give us the uh, $65 charge for that particular oil change so this is going uh, from bottom up if you will uh, if they ch chose 4 then we'd be able to do that it really wouldn't matter uh, too much how we did that so the third oil change would be 3 minus 1 or 2 times 5 would be 10 for 80 would give us 70 and the reason we're having to subtract 1 is that if you notice if we had used 4 which is the they had chosen 4 oil changes it would have been 20 which would be in the wrong value so we had to subtract 1 each time and this algorithm then starts to take shape notice how the value of the algorithm goes from 4, 3, 2 to 1 right in here uh, also notice that we have to subtract 1 from the number to get the correct result. The deviation of the deduction amount is calculated upside down from the way that the charges would be levied, assuming that the customer pays $80 for the first oil change and $75 for the second and so on. This will be okay since we are not producing a bill here. We are calculating the total charges and savings. So now we can write an expression in the form of an assignment statement. Let's use the third calculation down for this as an example. So we'll take this one and try to work with that in terms of coming up with the uh, equation. Now we're looking for an equation that we can put into a loop, remember, eventually, and be able to do all of these uh, various calculations. We're not going to code these numbers into the program, uh, not all of them anyway, because it only works for one of the oil changes. So if we were to code this expression into the program, uh, it would only do one, one oil change charge. We need to make changes to it so that it will work for all oil changes. To do that, we will substitute some variable names into this expression. So here we have, for instance, replace 75 with oil change charge, and we have replaced the 2 here with oil change number. Assuming we use those variable names, when the user enters 4 in our example, oil change number would be coming in from the user and would be put in here as 4 minus 1 is 3 times 5 is 15 from 80. And then it would also be the case that we might be able to amend the value of oil change number so that we can do all of the different charges for all the, the number of oil changes they choose using one equation. That's what we're trying to do is make this more universally applicable to our loop process. 
I had not changed the 85 or 1 values to variable names since they will not change for any of the calculations. Notice that only the numbers in black in the following change value. So here 4, 3, 2, 1, but 85 and 1 do not change. So that's why we left those as hard coded. Um, in normal application, we would probably put in variable names for these values and input the values from somewhere like a database. That would make the application more flexible. We are not going to do that since we are not studying how to input from a database this term, so we will hard code these numbers into the equation. Optionally, we can break this equation up a little and gain some clarity. So instead of using this equation, we could take the oil change uh, number minus 1 times 5 in the parentheses here and set that equal to a variable call it deduction and then subtract that from the 80 in a, in a second line and we've just split this equation up into two. Uh, sometimes this is a good idea because it can be more clear uh, to the next person reading your code if you're using a variable like deduction uh, as to what this expression is. If it's in this equation it takes a little while to figure out oh this is the deduction part this is pretty straightforward. And with that, we have the heart of the algorithm. We know that we are going to put this into a loop. I am going to choose a pretest loop since it is possible for the customer to not choose to take advantage of this offer. So if they chose zero for the oil change, then we wouldn't want to do this. And we would therefore want to test to see what they had chosen first before we started the loop. A post-test loop would go in once before we do that test. So that's why I've chosen a pretest, and I don't have the control for it in here yet, but we'll deal with that later. One thing that strikes me is that there is no way for oil change number to go from its original value of 3 to 2 to 1. So another statement is needed to make that happen. In other words, we need to, as we remember, have this number go 4, 3, 2, 1, decrement in value, and there's no way to do that yet. So what we'll do is add this statement, oil change number is equal to oil change number minus 1. And every time we go through the loop, it will decrease the value of oil change number. So if it start at 4, it become 3, then 2, then 1. Um, also, since oil change number is a good name for the input variable, and I don't want to change any of the original input values, I will make a copy of the variable and use that copy in the loop instead of the original name. This will be done just prior to the loop. So here's that uh, statement right here, just prior to the loop. We're setting oil change number count equal to oil change number. And now I've changed everywhere I had oil change number in the previous algorithm. I have now changed it to oil change count so that we do not impact or change the original value of oil change number. It will be there if we need it later on. Since the value of oil change number should be accumulated, I will also have to uh, add its name to the equation for that variable. Oil change charge is equal to 80 minus deduction in the original equation is now going to be changed to equal to itself, the old value of itself, plus 80 minus deduction. The reason we needed to do this is that if we didn't, oil change charge would be changed each time uh, we went through and we'd never accumulate all of the oil change charges. And since this is an accumulated field now uh, in that we're going to want to save all of those, uh, I had better set the variable to zero before the loop so that the stale values from previous customer transactions do not add into the results. So now what we'll do is we'll add this statement prior to loop and sets oil change charge to zero. Okay, so we might think that we have the correct algorithm now. One thing that I haven't done as yet is to put in the conditional test for the pretest loop. I usually let that go until last because I often find that it is easier for me to see what the conditional test should be when I can see the whole algorithm. So I have yet to do this part of it. But now it's time, since we think we might be close to the algorithm, to do that. So I want to consider first that the loop should only run when the number of oil changes requested is a number between 1 and 6. I have used the while keyword to match the test for greater than 1 and less than 6. So now I've got while oil change number greater than 1 and oil change number less than 6. 
So I've got it in the right range for the oil change number uh, for the package. This will prevent the loop from executing when it is not supposed to. An alternative to doing this this way would be to use an alternation statement. This will not end the loop when we need to end it, however. So you could have used an alternation statement and uh, tested for these values and only done the loop if it was in these values, but this is another way of putting it into the conditional test for the loop itself. But as I just said, this isn't going to be the whole story because we also need to end this loop at a particular point in time, and these will not end it. Uh, perhaps when the user enters 4, for instance, uh, this would go on forever because oil change number uh, would be between 1 and 6 and it would just keep going. Looking at the variable oil change number count, it would seem that the loop should end when the value of this variable is uh, 0. So let's take a look at trying to do that. So we'll add in this AND, another AND, and oil change number count equal to 0 being a test. This won't work either since to enter the loop oil change number count must equal 0. Since the value of oil change number count should be more than 0 to be in the loop, I will change the operator from equal to an operator of greater than. So here we are with a greater than symbol. I see another slight change that I can make. If I take the oil change number count minus 1 um, out of the first statement, it would be more efficient since that calculation is inside the loop and will be executed multiple times if I put this up ahead of the loop. This can be done by moving it into this statement where we set the oil number count. So now we've moved uh, this up to where we calculate before the loop oil change number count and we've taken out the reference to the minus one down here that's in the loop. And that's a slight improvement for efficiency sake. So now we can check, desk check this code by trying to uh, trying a value of oil change number. Uh, let's use the value of 4 since we already know the results we should get. We've already gone through that and calculated those. So I'm going to bring up a table. I am going to make a column below for e in here for each variable in our algorithm and keep track of the results as we walk through the code. I have abbreviated the oil change prefix to just OC so that it will better fit here on the screen. And I have added align numbers to the above code so that it can f we can follow it more easily. So here's the line number, one for each of the statements in the code. And we'll just refer to those line numbers. So first line number uh, in our code is to set oil change uh, charge to zero. And so oil change charge to zero here in red to show that it has been changed is zero. Everything else is as it was. Oil change number count is stale data. It hasn't had anything done to it, so it would be stale data at this point. Uh, oil change number is still at 4. That was the user entered data. The deduction would be stale data coming from the previous test. It hasn't been changed. In line 2, we set oil change number count equal to oil change number minus 1. So here's oil change number, well, 4, and minus 1 would make it 3. And again, in red, it shows what has been changed. Everything else stays the same. So we got rid of that stale data from before. In line 3, we actually hit the loop. And nothing changes here, uh, but we do do the testing to see if we go in. And since OC, or oil change number, is between 1 and 6, and oil change number count is greater than 0, it is 3, the loop will be entered. And that's the decision that takes place at line 3. And that means that we'll go into the loop and execute line 4. Line 4 changes the value of deduction. Whereas it was stale data before, we now say it's five times the oil change number count, which is still three, which would make that a 15. After doing that, we hit line five. And in line five, we're calculating the oil change charge. And so that's the one that's going to change here. And it's equal to 15 deduction from 80, which would be 65 added to the oil change charge, which would mean that we'd come up with a value of 65 for oil change charge. Now we go to line 6, which changes the value of oil change number count. Oil change number count was 3. It becomes 2 because we subtract 1 from it in this statement. 
and then we would hit line seven and that would send us back to the start of the loop at line three that's all line seven will do and we would re-enter the loop since oil change number is still between one and six and oil change number count is still greater than zero it's two so we go in and hit line four again which if you recall uh, changes the value for deduction and we would now have two times five or ten and that's where this 10 comes from in line 4 in the second iteration. After that, we would hit line 5 again and change the value for oil change charge. And oil change charge this time would become 135, which would be 70 plus 65. 10 from 80 is 70, and we would add that to the uh, value for what we had last time, 65. And after that, we'd hit line 6, which would decrement, this should be in red actually, decrement the value for uh, the oil change number count, and it would become 1. Line 7 sends us back to line 3 again. We re-enter the loop since, again, oil change number hasn't changed. It's still between 1 and 6, and oil change number count is still greater than 0. It's 1. Hitting line 4 one more time, we would uh, calculate a value for the... Uh, deduction, uh, this time it's 1 times 5 or 5. We subtract that from 80 and get 75 and add that in the next line to uh, the value for the oil change charge that we're accumulating, which would make it 210. In line 6, we would subtract 1 from the oil change number count and get us to 0. Line 7, we would then hit, sends us back to line 3. We exit the loop since oil change number count is no longer greater than 0, and since the, the three controls are all connected with ands, they all have to be true, and this means just one of them, like this being false, we would exit. And the code would ex continue executing with a line of code after the end of the loop. Eventually, we would output 210 for the oil charge and 5 for the deductions. The oil charge actually would be inside the price for the car. But if you recall, the oil change charge should have been 290 when we did this the first time by hand. And the deduction should have been 30, not 5. 5 is just the last uh, savings, not the total. The difference between 290 that we should have had and the 210 that we got is 80. This is the charge for an oil change without any savings. And if you recall, the customer should have been charged at the regular rate for the first oil change. If you look back through the alg algorithm, you, we exited the loop just prior to the iteration that would have added the $80. So to fix this, we just have to make the loop execute one more time. This can easily be done in the conditional test. We will change the greater than zero to a greater than or equal to zero. So we just add the equal sign in here, it was greater than, now it's going to be greater than or equal to. And that'll mean it will go through the loop one more time. When it comes back through on our desk check, and this zero had us exit, it will then go back in one more time, subtract zero from 80, and then add that to the total, giving us 290. So that'll solve that problem. The total deductions also needs to be fixed. We are, getting, we are getting $5 when we should be getting $30. If you look at the manual desk check numbers, we calculate all the deductions correctly. Back up here, we had 15, 10, 5. The only thing we didn't do or don't do is to accumulate the individual deductions into a total deduction result. So that's why we ended up with just 5 at the end. We know that accumulated values must be set to zero at the start to avoid uh, any stale values, so we will add two line, new lines of code and one new variable to our algorithm. So the two lines that we're going to be adding is we'll set total deductions, a new variable, to zero uh, before the loop starts. And then down here we'll add this line and say that we'll take the deduction, whatever it might be, 15, 10, 5, whatever it is, and add it to the deduction total to give us a new deduction total. And if you recall about accumulated values, this will accumulate all of the uh, different deductions for all the different oil changes into this variable. Now, when we do the desk check, there will be a new variable to keep track of, deduction total, and it will have the result we need for the total deductions taken for the given number of oil changes. 
this uh, ends our reasoning. This seems to be, without the line numbers, this seems to be the uh, algorithm that we'll use in our program. And uh, when you get down to the step where you're going to calculate uh, something like this, and it needs an algorithm like this, it is best to stop, like I have done, and to figure out what that should be before proceeding. Okay, so we're going to terminate this now and go back to the program and put this code in.